So, uh, for people who don't me, know me, my name is Dalia Raphael. I am a, a director at Delta Insights, um, um, founded a new uh, organization focused on Dynamics and Power Platform. I've been working on, on Dynamics in Microsoft CRM in partic particular um, since version 3.0. Um, so, uh, although I have been um, in the business and building practices and all of that, uh, my heart is quite nerdy and I like to get my hands dirty every now and then and, and figure out what's what's out there and what is new. Um, and um, I'm, I'm very pleased to, to, to actually share with you what I have um, found recently with the industry solutions. And, and why this is important and why I found it very a game changer in our industry. Um, so just to start with um, an overview of this, um, there, I, I left a link um, and hopefully this will be shared afterwards so you can go to the link uh, where Microsoft released new industry solutions. Um, these are um, the, the solutions and we will go through each one of them. This is now general available, um, I think a week or two weeks ago, so quite fresh. Um, and uh, it, I'm going to take you through each one of them, um, not in details, but more in a high level of what it is, what does it provide and why it is, it is cool to, to know about it and how it is going to help businesses and, and yourselves. Um, so the Microsoft Cloud for Healthcare is quite powerful and I mean, we can talk about it for hours. Um, I'm going to mention quite a few things that um, caught my eye. Um, there is the Microsoft Cloud for Financial Services. There is the Microsoft Cloud for Nonprofit. Uh, Microsoft Vaccination Management, which actually in the keynote they mentioned it briefly. There is the Microsoft Return to School and Return to Workplace Solutions. So the last three you will find there is a theme of what we are going through in COVID um, and how they come about uh, because I believe COVID is here to stay. Um, so it is how schools and workplaces and in the entire world, how they're going to cope with with the new um, new enemy or or friend or whoever um, to deal with. Um, so, just to give you a bit of background for people who are new to this, Microsoft actually, um, it's not the first time that they come up with solutions. In 2018, they released some uh, accelerators, solution accelerators that they made it available for free for organizations to um, download and use it. For example, the healthcare, it was there as an accelerator. It has been duplicate, duplicated now because um, Cloud for Healthcare is, is available. But th this concept of accelerator um, has been there for some time and there is a reason for it. Now, from my experience um, and for people in the, in the call who are consultants, um, you know, usually you would go to any organizations and you would customize dynamics um, from scratch and, and try to understand the requirements and, um, and configure or customize. And, and CRM has been always very flexible that you can build entities, attributes and workflows um, to your content. Um, but what I found over the years is quite important uh, is the, the industry knowledge is quite um, important. Um, you know, it's different when you bring in someone who is going to build dynamics from scratch and someone who actually worked in the, in the banks and understand the challenges of the banks and tells you this is how it should work. Or someone from the healthcare a nurse, for example, and tells you this is how it should work. And that's why the, the beauty of um, ac accelerators becomes and, and for people who are um, familiar with, with this concept, that's why in a lot of organizations we do um, center of excellence where, because you live and breathe these kind of processes, this kind of business challenges, and um, it, it's not generic anymore. Um, so, so that's why there, there is that concept of um, just trying, 
that's why there's that concept of accelerator. Now, if I would, I would tell you what, you know, for people in the call as well who are not familiar with accelerator, why accelerator, we, we can build power apps, um, why this is important and why Microsoft has invested so much on creating accelerators. If you look at this um, layers um, picture, the, the, the first layer is the Microsoft Power Platform Common Data Model that everyone is familiar with. This is where you built all your um, data model on it. There is the industry accelerator that sits on it, that Microsoft comes with um, common uh, processes and entities and, and features that are built on that data model. There is some sample apps that Microsoft also came up with that's specific for healthcare or not-for-profit um, or finance, whatever. Um, and there is also the opportunity for industry ISVs, so organizations in the, um, in the partner world that they can build ISVs on top of that. So that most probably customers would not use automatically things on this layer and probably the accelerator will speed the implementation for to some extent, but still there is some sort of ISVs and apps that you can build in the, the which are delivered in the app store. SIs now come as ourselves, you know, who have been in the in the industry, understanding how to customize, how to integrate with other systems, um, how to change the language to the customer specified um, requirements. This is the layer where it built. So you can see that it, it, to get to where you want, it's gone are the days when you reinvent the wheel. You know, you need to always think about what is out there um, pre-built by other organizations or by Microsoft that we can leverage, especially when we are talking about industry specific. Any questions here before I keep going? Nothing in the chat. So uh, but keep questions coming in, folks, as needed. Okay. Come on in. Okay. Now, now I'm going to drill more into each um, industry specific, um, and if it's relevant to your organization um, or to clients, and you want to talk about it and add something, please feel free um, to share your your story. Um, so Microsoft Cloud for not-for-profit. So this is quite close to my heart because I've worked with so many not-for-profit organizations and I can see that the challenges that they have. Um, mainly it is um, the lack of maturity, but also the lack of funding. Um, and they want, um, they really desperate to get um, some good systems so they can find reporting and can prove to their funders or donors that they um, are doing a good job, right? And they they are they want to get uh, more of these fundings. So these are challenges that we're all aware of. Um, so Microsoft Cloud for Not for Profit came up with a really good set of solutions um, around fundraising, around volunteer management. So when I talk about solutions, it's not only a solution in dynamics with some entities and attributes. It's actually a full-blown, um, you know, Power Apps and portal for the volunteers and Power BI, so good reporting um, and templates of managing um, volunteers and donors and all of that. So it's it's quite substantial. Um, the fundraising and engagement, for example, I'm just going to give you a bit of an overview of what they have built um, as, a, as a fundraising. So donors, um, 360 degree view of the household, um, how much they have been giving, um, how, how many members. So this is like a, a, a household um, information. Um, this is a campaign for um, like what you are used to campaign management, but they have extended it to manage uh, fundraising and and how much donation they have captured. Um, this one is also um, you can manage the, the cash that comes in um, and, and, and how um, was it, whether it was anonymous or by people and what activities we need to do with these um, donations and, and workflows that ma manages in the background. So it's quite substantial. Now, this one is a volunteering program um, called Buddy Mentoring Program. So you can capture 
Um, so how many people, participants are coming in, how many are approved, what are the courses they need to do, how many needs review, timeline activities of this whole program. So it's managing the whole volunteer program. Also volunteers, they will have um, a, a, a portal. So and it can be um, so this this portal will you will log in, you will you will upload your information and your application. Um, it also you can extend it to get your certifications and police checks required for the application. It can also get you to do the education needed for you to be uh, onboarded as a volunteer. So it's quite extensive and, and, and powerful, but obviously this is a template. So you will take that and, and extend it. At, at least it got you somewhere from, from A to B, and then you can get to the next uh, version um, by extending it more. Um, this is a, um, a, a program impact dashboard. So this is, as I mentioned, it comes with the dashboards and with the Power BI um, uh, template as well. Um, this is quite important for to get a holistic view of your not-for-profit overall program. Um, so all the revenue raised that's aligned with these programs um, and the program participants, how, how have been served to date, um, many not-for-profits use this view to provide updates to their leadership team and, and board or internal staff. Uh, it's also a starting point when preparing annual impact reports and things like that. Any questions on the not-for-profit before I move on to the next one? I'm sorry, Dalia Galit here. I just, um, I'm guessing um, this accelerator can maybe integrate to some award systems. For example, in Australia, I know that um, this type of data model they would like to um, retrieve all sorts of awards that they can rate the volunteers and um, put them in front of volunteering positions that needs to have very specific certifications and awards with their uh, performance. So I'm guessing we can easily integrate this. Yeah, yeah, and, and this is where the opportunity for uh, partners and SIs where they they take these templates and they see how this is going to be integrated with the customer's existing um, softwares. Thanks. Absolutely. Thanks. And sitting on a, on a power platform and, 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 and for people who know the dataverse and all of that, so it, it, is, it has got all of these features. It's just a skin on top for the um, to speed the implementations. Thank you. Thank you, Galit. Then the next one is the Microsoft Cloud for financial services. Now the financial services is quite substantial. It's it's quite big and large and in, in no way um, anyone would think that they can build on Dynamics from scratch. So that's why Microsoft came up with um, this powerful um, solution. Uh, again, explaining just the layers, um, Microsoft Azure and Power Platform sits on top of whatever the bank or the financial services organization has got its own data model and compliance system and in industry, financial services, you know, all the old things. But this is where Microsoft comes to play with the Azure Power Platform Dynamics 365 and, and Office or Microsoft 365. Um, the, the main um, areas here, features, you will find that this is the, the banking, customer engagement. So this is the customer 360 degree view with the people are familiar with, the customer service, omni-channel, um, the customer voice for surveys and, and feedback, customer insights to get um, a holistic view of the customer, um, um, you know, business intelligence. Um, the customer onboarding, this is where it has got a lot of um, features and, 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 and business processes already built in this uh, solution around the loan, building um, how to apply for a loan tracker using Power Apps. Uh, and there is a portal as well for a retail banking sample. As I mentioned, it, it comes with a lot of good templates for Power Apps, Power Portal. Um, there is the collab collaboration manager um, using SharePoint and booking system. 
Um, there's a unified customer profile. Um, and there's also some um, good areas where it's outside of the Dynamics world a bit with, with uh, fraud protection and compliance manager. So if we look at the, the customer profile, you, you get that kind of overview of all the accounts of, um, of the 360 degree view of your customer. Um, what investments they have, what loans, where is the credit uh, balance, all of that sort of stuff. It also gets access to your um, card system, which is new. I was a bit surprised because um, maybe 15 years ago when we were building CRM applications, it was kind of a, a, a taboo and no, no to, to save uh, uh, credit card um, information on, on dynamics. I don't know about you guys with your experience, but that's my experience. So this is kind of secure way to get all the, the cards. Um, the, there is also a, a really good uh, view of the of the household um, financial balance, how much assets they have got, how much total liability. So you, you can see there's a lot of thoughts that was built already into this that can kickstart um, a, a whole lot of um, implementation and, and not start things from, from uh, scratch. Um, this is quite familiar with, with um, uh, an, uh, an app. Um, I am using the Dynamics uh, look and feel of, of the you know, process bar, um, onboarding a customer with the loan, um, what sort of um, activities, the, so the loan application progress, what, what, we ha what they have provided, um, also declares the assets and liability. Um, it's quite substantial. And then there is the sample portal, and sorry my screenshots are not that great, but this is basically from a portal. Uh, a customer will um, log in and, and apply and, and put their profile um, and saves a lot of the face-to-face. -face. I mean, Again, nowadays with everything, um, customer service pushing it to the customer to do a lot of that stuff, um, uh, you know, customer portals becoming very, very um, wanted and needed with our customers because you know people don't see other people face to face anymore. So this is a, a good way to to apply for your loan, um, go through the what financial status and assets. And, and push your request through. Any questions? I mean, I went through it so quickly, but it's quite big and substantial. You can go, as I mentioned, the link before and read a lot about the cloud for financial services. Um, Daniel, a quick question here. Um, yeah. So um, you mentioned about the uh, uh, the customer onboarding, right? So is yeah. there a app uh, pre-built uh, available or is there a template that customers will be using there so um, if i need to apply for a loan or something right so is there an app already available there that, that's what i understand yes from what i read that there is an app i haven't downloaded it myself um mm -hmm. the, the cloud for financial services but from what i read yes there is an app that to onboard and and put all your applications through Yeah, good question. OK, um, moving on. So the, the Microsoft vaccination management. Now, I don't know how um, in New Zealand uh, they do it, but this is obviously was built in the States and I'm pretty sure in, in Australia as well. I think um, people from Australia can um, confirm that Microsoft are using this app in some places in Australia. So this is how it looks like. There is a vaccination hub. You, you select the site and uh, you, you basically book some, some time for the vaccine. You can search your uh, location and it will tell you um, where is the nearest place. This is all using Power Apps. Um, you can search, look for an appointment and book an appointment and then it will send you a um, uh, QR co code and all of that. Um, it's, it's quite nice and simple. I'm not sure if you guys have heard anyone use that, but I, um, I've heard that it was rolled out in Australia. So, so when you come into the clinic, that you say, do you want to see my QR code to scan it? And I say, no, that's fine, just go in. <laughs> <laughs> 
So <laughs> taking away the, the whole QR code. <laughs> yes, like, but I brought my QR code. This is Power Apps. No. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The, o over here also, it started with all this booking system, and you book like in advance for four or five weeks, and now it's just like walk in, just just get yeah. the jab. Uh, just go in. What's your name? Uh, okay, you good. Go in. <laughs> over here as well, it checks for NHI. So from my experience with NHI integration, it's it's quite um, cool when you get it working. If you get it working, um, that the NHI, which is the People who don't know, it's the unique number for every uh, person. Um, so this is how you, it will identify whether um, you have had the vaccine or not. So I, I suppose this app could be extended to enter your NHI and, and pop up with all your information. And you can see that you've got the first jab. Give me. I think this is also here to stay. Honestly, it's just because the population now is almost 90% vaccinated. Um, we're still going to get the booster, right? Uh, and and, um, and and it comes next year, the following year, there will be another shot that everyone has to take. So the vaccine um, and booking appointments and all of that, it's probably here to stay for a long time. Any Any questions, guys? Okay. Well, if we roll back to the um, non-profit, right? So if you were brand new, right, never touched Dynamics, um, but you saw that was an option and you were, say, you're a local charity and you want to do some work, what what would be your um, guidance for, for for anyone wanting to look at these these options? Would it be to engage a consultant initially and step through it, or would it be to go find There's someone who's done it? As well. Yeah, there's a lot of documentation, really, really good documentation from Microsoft on that link. And um, there is a guide that you actually need to go and the, the pricing is not open for public um, because it's not for profit and you need to prove that you are not for profit and all of that. Um, so you need to go through that process to en enable for, for you to download it and, and check it. Um, I think there's a lot of information there that people can spin up and understand it themselves. Um, but my recommendation is just work with a consultant who understands the the ins and outs and what how to, how to to set up the right environment and the right things so that there's no mistakes happen. But there's a lot of information and documentation and videos that explains the not for profit. Um, and what we found actually, this is a good point, is that. Some of the not-for-profit organizations we work with, um, it, it, they only want to use maybe 50% of what the whole thing offers. Um, and that's why I, I'm, I'm saying maybe better to work with a consultant because they will be able to extract these areas that are not relevant, absolutely not relevant. So we worked for not-for-profit that, for example, uh, they do volunteers, but they don't. They capture donations somewhere else. So you need to remove these kind of donation processes and and mention about it uh, from the whole solution. I hope I answered your question. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Thanks. All right. Yeah. Okay. Moving on. Uh, return to school solution. Now this is quite an interesting one. Um, for people who have got kids returning to school and the nervousness that happens um, around do I get them back or not. In New Zealand, I think they announced um, that everyone is going back to school next week. And I know for sure, um, you know, my daughter has got some friends saying we don't want to go. <laughs> and, and the whole idea of who is vaccinated, who is not, what if there are COVID cases, what we're going to do. Um, so this solution actually quite a cool solution and I have looked at what's involved. It's it's actually can can be built and put together in within a week, um, which is quite cool. And um, it has got um, some areas where you can get the, the daily access control. So for for teachers and, and it could be for universities as well, not only for schools. Um, and for students to, to enter um, their, their access. It can actually do the periodic testing. So if you want to do um, COVID testing, maybe this is more relevant in the US, they do COVID testing, I'm not sure. But as I said, 
COVID is here to stay and people need to realize how to deal with it and how to manage and have the tools to, to capture this information, not in paper, but there is a whole um, software and power apps that deals with this. There are some dashboards, there's a case management and manual contact tracing and also vaccination tracking. So at the moment, probably people are tracking the vaccination of their uh, students and, and teachers in Excel spreadsheets, maybe, I don't know, um, but this is a whole solution that does that. Um, so it gets you to enter um, your information. Um, do you accept that you are feeling good? Um, or you, you probably come and visiting, contractors coming visiting the, the school. Um, it also, the, there is a whole um, IT administration that manages the COVID testing. There is a dashboard and an analytics um, that looks at all the, the, the score, if they are um, good to reopen or not. Again, it's, it's probably more relevant to the US, but I think if we look at it and try to minimize these areas and, and sell it to the, the people here who are opening schools, it could be uh, quite powerful. Um, return to workplace, pretty much um, similar concept. There is a lo location readiness, so it helps to determine the readiness of the facilities um, and um, efficiently manage their safe reopening. Um, facility managers can task force leaders, can use the location readiness dashboard to quickly make informed decisions whether there's um, how much COVID-19 infection rates in these areas. Um, now think about, I think, as, as an organization that has got uh, manufacturing or utilities in multiple places, and they have um, got a case of COVID in one of the places, how they can trace it, um, how can they safely onboard people every day, um, that um, maybe they are not feeling well or, you know, things like that. And there is also return to the workplace portal. Um, so this is a quick app to say, I want to get a day pass to visit, to visit this manufacturing or to visit, to visit this um, retail facility. Um, and you get a pass, you register a guest or a dependent, you get a daily health check, and then you can, you need to declare or agree that you haven't, had high temperature uh, or excessive coughing. So these are kind of things that I think all organizations need to think about and need to look at their um, regulations when it comes to reopening um, with COVID living with us. Any questions? The, the portal, um, this is the workplace care management. So this is where you can see with the clusters of the cases. I, I really hope we don't get to that um, model in New Zealand, but from what we have seen everywhere else in the world, th there will be um, clusters and, and managing the cases and contacts, um, how, how much of that in your whole investigation, how many are open, how many are we investigating, how many resolved and all of that. All right, this is another view as well of the same thing. Any any questions around return to school or return to workplace? Okay. All right, so now, up to the next and last one, but not least, which is um, probably the most powerful one I have seen, is the cloud for healthcare. Now, what is the cloud for healthcare and why does it exist? The, the, the challenges that happens uh, at the moment, it's, it's in, in the healthcare in general, there are three main areas that the patient consumer experience, there is the clinical experience and there is the healthcare organization experience. So patients, they are finding it very hard to navigate the health system. They want to be able to see my information, manage myself, manage my appointment, 
Um, I want to do online banking. I feel like I've disappeared into a digital black hole and I'm, nobody is, is responding to me. Um, the clinical experience, they are, why is it so hard to work on, on any system? Um, they are frustrated by the multiple system sign-ons. They, 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 this is not their core, right? They don't want to, to, to panic about how to use um, the systems. They want to focus on delivering health service to their um, patients uh, or consumers. And the organizations on the top of the, of the management, they want to get information quickly. And they want to see how they are um, coping with, uh, with the chronic diseases in real time and analyze that and, and, and how do we implement a new models of care because whatever is not working. How can they move quickly to the um, digital world where they can't see their, um, their patients anymore? Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm talking about uh, physiotherapists, for example, my, during lockdown, my mom hurt her back and, 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 and she can't go anywhere. Um, and um, the physiotherapist um, had to call her through Zoom um, and, and how easy that was um, to, to navigate through and to explain to her how what exercises she needs to do as a physiotherapist. This is reality nowadays, right? You need to get into the digital world and make it easy for the clinical people and the patients to communicate digitally while people can't visit. So that, that's the challenges. And um, the, 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 what Microsoft came up with with the cloud for healthcare, actually, it touches on each one of those. It enhances, it provides a portal, an easy way for the patient to, to improve their experience and outcomes. Um, it, it empowers the health team collaboration. There is, um, they use Teams, for example, to collaborate. They use uh, video um, conferencing. It improves the clinical and operation insights. It has really loads of amazing dashboards and pictures that explains how things are going. Um, in in the health world. Um, if I would just show you the holistic circle of what the solution gives. Um, so it, uh, there is the care team collaboration, so empower the health team, optimize the resources, and, and there's the core coordination and, and building and monitoring um, the plans. There is the analytics that comes with it with the clinical, and this is the virtual health patient insight, enhancing the patient in, um, engagement. So these are the, the three pillars that actually builds the whole cloud for healthcare. So if I show you just examples um, and screenshots of the care management, um, that's what it looks like. Again, it is familiar um, look and feel. Uh, there is the care plans is quite extensive and, and the best person actually in the call Galit will know all about how these care plans will work uh, but the, it has like nice dashboards embedded inside um, dynamics that shows you how many of these care plans are active or in progress who is looking after them who are the members when is it due it's quite it's quite cool um, they also, um, Casey, as a, as a patient, we can see in, in a, a timeline way all her care plans, what are the conditions, what, what procedures, um, what medications um, the, she has taken, all a holistic view of, of the care uh, management. It also, um, you know, here there is the appointment. Um, and how many of these activities are, are on, how many has finished, and then you can, by a click of a button, call the, um, the practitioner or the nurse as well, and um, they can have communication here, and, and you have the whole patient information in front of you while you're talking to the patient. And uh, this is basically the virtual clinic where you, you get the appointment and you speak uh, through Teams, and, and the whole thing sits in Teams, as you can see here. Patient portal is so powerful, and every single customer have seen this were just amazed. Um, 
how uh, rich it is and, and how much you can do. So you can manage the patient information here. You can look at all the medication in one place, all the messages upcoming. You can actually book appointments um, and see when it is available for the uh, your favorite uh, practitioner. Um, so you schedule the appointment. You can view your messages. You can look for doctors and look for all the uh, past and future activities happening. Um, quite powerful for a patient portal, which wasn't there before. Um, so this is all new where you, you register a patient. You go also through onboarding a whole process. You verify, you get the insurance information and you start joining. So, so Microsoft Cloud for healthcare, um, the, the architecture, it's basically sitting in, in Azure and common data model here. Um, as, as I mentioned to you, so it uses Dynamics 365 for, for the uh, internal people, enhancing the engagement of the patient and collaborating between practitioner. It uses Microsoft 365 to empower the health collaboration here with the teams. And it uses um, the Power Platform as well with Power BI to, um, uh, for operation and insights. Um, so with that, I conclude that these are the main ones that Microsoft um, have announced. Industry solutions, I encourage you to go and check them out. They're quite good and powerful and even I would say even if it wasn't relevant um, or you're not working with a customer or you are not in a customer that actually has any of these pillars, there are some aspects that you can probably get some good ideas on how you can use it in your own organization. I, I believe, you know, the look of how clever they have built the, the apps or the portals or managed the whole look and feel to make it easy you can take some tips in your own organization. Um, thank you very much and um, open for the next 10 minutes. In, any questions? Thanks, Taylor. That was great. Um, what would you say your, uh, your favorite one of those that you've shown us is? Or if someone was getting started, which one should they look at first? Um, my uh, well, my favorite one is is that probably the ha the cloud for healthcare is just because it's so good to see how the health care can benefit from technology. That's, that's something I'm really passionate about, and I really love to see the healthcare getting improved. Um, that the I don't know if the the easiest one probably um, the return to to school or return to workplace. These are quite good apps that you can just take and and implement. Yeah, um, I think they have gone a really long way since the accelerator started a few years ago. Mm. Mm. Uh, a question from Summit wants just to know that are they free to try on? Uh, some of them would be free, some of them you actually need the license, but um, um, people in the call they can help me out. <laughs> I think that there are demo environments that you can actually download. That's right, it's a demo, but um, there's all sorts of different, for different accelerator, you will have a different, uh, so for non-for-profit is uh, free, to download from App Source, but ha uh, Cloud for Healthcare, since the accelerator was deprecated, you would have, um, a whole different setup and different SKUs of how to land the different modules. So it consists of six modules and um, there are some prerequisites. So it's um, different setup than the non-for-profit, for example. So um, uh, part of them available in App Source, part of them are just on a demo mode and you will need to um, do some yeah. purchase process there. Thanks, Jonah. Jonah, sorry. Uh, Dahlia, I'm just wondering, uh, Mike here. Uh, Hi, Mike. Is, is there, um, is this like a template, obviously a template to get started? 
But is there a, 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 an update cadence from Microsoft and could that be applied to, you know, your existing implementation? What do you mean? Um, well, as, as, they, as, as they, well, sorry, as, well, I suppose as they enhance these industry solution, you know, year on year, that you, you, you're you able to take advantage of extensions and enhancements. That I, I believe that, and also in this link, if you go, there is a roadmap. So Microsoft will have a roadmap and to enhance these industries. Absolutely. And, and uh, the, I, I, I didn't actually mention that when Microsoft came up with these accelerators a few years ago, um, they were for free. Now, the cloud for healthcare has got license. The cloud for financial services got license. And now, because it's got licenses, there is um, a way to improve it, right? And there is a roadmap to yep. keep uh, yeah, improving it. So once you put it in, you will. there is a whole improvement process. Great, thank you. Any more questions? We finished early. You guys can have some time uh, in between sessions. Another question from Suma, just to run how is that? Is it is there like a, a reasonable cadence of the updates to this? I'm assuming there's solutions and or managed solutions and you and you wrap them in like that when you download them, but do they roll them out every quarter or does it just depend on the solution? Uh, look, I, I'm not sure. So that, for example, they've only been released in October, general availability. Um, so this is the first version. I don't know how often they will be releasing new versions, but as I mentioned, because they are licensed, there will be a whole set of release. Um, de depending on which solution you're talking about. If you talk about the health, yes, the financial, yes. But the other ones that vaccination, all of that, um, I don't think so. I don't know. I, I really need to ask uh, Microsoft and look at the roadmap, what they are planning to do. Thank you. All right. Well, and there, there is are, a question, no. so how yeah. can ISB partners enhance? Um, with the picture that I showed in the beginning, it, it, think about it as layers. So, so this whole solution is not the end result. So there is an opportunity to actually build on top of it and enhance and configure. So it is, um, it is just a quick way to, to get you there. And then it's an opportunity for partners and ISVs to build their own solution on top as well. Any more questions? Do I know the cost? Yeah. Um, <laughs> last I had a look at it. Um, so you will need to buy prerequisites of the Dynamics uh, 365 and the Power Platform. So these are all prerequisites, whatever it costs per user per month. And then for the healthcare, there's also an extra cost of almost another hundred dollars per user per month. So it's it's not cheap. And for people, in case you go around and, and wonder, it is not available in CSP. It is an EA license, um, which is, um, took us by surprise. I mean, may, they may change that in the future, but um, it, it is made for a large organizations. All right. Any further questions, folks? Well, we've got Daly on the line. Okay, I will, so we'll close it there. We'll give everybody 10 minutes back. Thanks very much for, for, for presenting. Thank Daly. you it was very really good. much. Um, we appreciate it. Really good. Hopefully, if you, everyone's got any questions to follow up, just reach out direct after the session. Use the Meetup channel or the Teams thread just to talk away. Uh, we've got 10 minutes, so a little break. Uh, go grab some toast or something for because it's still morning in New Zealand um, or another coffee. And then we've got Peter coming on at 11 o'clock today. So thanks again, Daddy. Really appreciate it. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for listening. See ya.